Today's video is going to cover a fairly obscure comic character. Recently I've been doing my best to read every single Moon Knight comic in existence, and even with that goal in mind, I had not gotten to the point where I learned much about the subject of today's video until I went searching for it. Moon Knight is a character that because of his disassociative identity disorder sometimes can come across as an unreliable narrator. His origins, his past, and in some cases even his future are all told through an ever-changing lens. The fifth episode of Moon Knight introduces us to the MCU version of Mark's past, wherein as a young boy, Mark's little brother Randall accidentally drowned while playing in a cave during a fierce rainstorm. Mark blamed himself for the death of his brother, having peer pressured him into going into the cave while it was raining despite being told by their mother never to do that. Subsequently, Mark endured a lifetime of abuse and harassment from his mother over the guilt associated with Randall's death. This death, compounded with the continued harassment by his mother, was the collective trauma that caused his disassociative identity disorder to develop. Today's video is going to cover the comic book history of the villain Randall Specter, who in the comics goes on to take the moniker of Shadow Knight. Randall is quite different in the comics than he is in the show, so as we go I will point out various elements changed to adapt to this version of Moon Knight. I am, as always, going to start with his first comic appearance, then I'll go back and Tarantino the rest of his story. Randall Specter's first comic book appearance was Hulk 17 by Moon Knight's creator Doug Munch and drawn by Mike Zeck. I am, however, gonna breeze through these stories because they were later retconned and I will explain why when we get there. An unnamed man is shown buying various items at stores. Striped pajama bottoms, a Halloween mask, and a hatchet. Not, not looking good. That evening, the man puts all of those items on as a costume and goes out into the city hunting other humans. He manages to kill nine women, all of them are nurses in white candy striper outfits. This attracts the attention of Mark Spector, acting in his identity of Jake Lockley, a sort of streetwise detective who starts hitting all of his usual spots looking for info on the killer. Jake learns that the hatchet killer left a note on one of the victims saying that the killings will continue until he gets Lisa and her lover. This creepy blood message sparks an old memory of Mark's as he realizes he might know who the killer is. Oh yeah, that's just Randall killing people again and writing bloody messages on him. He was always a wild card, that guy. Now in the alter ego Stephen Grant, Mark has a conversation with his longtime love interest Marlene, and she suggests using herself in a costume as bait, which is a horrible idea and Stephen doesn't want to do it, but immediately folds to her pressure. At this point, we get a little bit of stuff cleared up for us in flashbacks, where we learn that Mark Spector killed a fellow mercenary named Randall after he went AWOL and sold his mercenary group out and killed Mark's love interest, a woman named Lisa. Mark assumed that Randall was dead, but with bloody corpse notes and hatchet men on the rise, we now know that these are actually suspected to be a way of drawing Mark out. Randall, acting as the serial killer Hatchet Man, stalks the streets, killing indiscriminately. Hatchet Man eventually catches up to Marlene, who's being used as bait, and she's gravely injured. Mark, being the boyfriend of the year, makes sure she gets medical help and then hunts down Randall, revealing that he's actually Randall Specter. After a brief chase that sees Mark get stabbed with a hatchet, of all things, Randall ends up dying after impaling himself on a tree. Quick side note, while this is considered Randall's first appearance, it's later retconned and revealed that this was not actually Randall Specter at all, simply a man brainwashed into believing he was Randall Specter. For a period of time, Mark believed his brother had died at his own hands twice. More on that later. Randall Specter is not seen again for many years, but we later learn that Randall was the younger brother of Mark, whom Randall believed was his mother and father's favorite son. Throughout their lives, Randall was consistently second fiddle to Mark's golden child and grew up idolizing and also imitating his choices. Mark and Randall's father was a rabbi and the boys grew up adhering to a strict Jewish faith. Mark would defend his brother from bullies and as Mark grew up and entered into the service, so did Randall, even working together on missions. And you know what they say, the family that kills people for money together stays together. As told before, after they converted to mercenary work, Randall was caught by a woman named Lisa planning to sell his own unit out that included Mark. Randall ended up killing Lisa, whom Mark was in love with, and in retaliation, Mark blew his punk ass up with a grenade, assuming that he died in the blast. But you can't just throw a grenade at somebody in comics and expect them to, like, die and stay dead. 
Randall survives and begins observing his brother over a multiple year period. During this period, he also aligns himself with a woman named Nephthys. Randall's first act of retribution was to destroy Mark's sprawling manor, along with most of his Moon Knight arsenal and significantly wounding his best friend, Jean-Paul Duchamp, and his girlfriend, Marlene. Moon Knight, along with an extremely uneasy alliance with the Punisher, hits the streets to learn everything they need to know about this duo. They found out that they had been purchasing AIM technology for their henchmen, nicknamed the Cult of Khonshu, to use in their upcoming war against Moon Knight and for general terrorist purposes. They end up tracking them down to another hideout formerly used by the Cult of Khonshu, and there they find Randall in a vat of liquid like Luke Skywalker in Empire Strikes Back. Another massive battle breaks out, and in the process, the tank is broken and Randall emerges. We now learn about Randall's new backstory, and some slight adjustments were made. On the same night that Mark Spector was killed in Egypt, his brother was also wounded. Unbeknownst to Mark, Randall was working as a soldier of fortune for a resistance group that clashed with Mark's earlier in the day. During that battle, Mark shot him and left him for dead, and unbeknownst to Mark, he had shot his own brother. That evening, both Mark and Randall, both gravely injured, were crawling towards the Temple of Seti. But Randall fell through a hidden crack in the sand and found a parchment called the Will of Khonshu. Once translated, it stated that there was once two Khonshus, brothers, and one had to kill the other to obtain their true power, mirroring the conflict between Mark and Randall. Randall aligned with Nephthys, who built a device, the tank that Randall was in earlier called the Lunar Absorber. This tank was meant to mimic the exact lunar conditions needed to give Randall the full power of Khonshu. Additionally, it's revealed that the original hatchet man from Randall's first appearance, who Mark killed some time before, was actually a brainwashed cult of Khonshu member who had false memories implanted in him and a buttload of plastic surgery. Randall quickly emerges from the tank and dubs himself Shadow Knight. Punisher tries to stop him, but it's quickly determined that Randall is now invulnerable, and the battle causes the building to fall down around them and Randall captures Mark. Despite being invulnerable, Mark is able to pierce his skin using an adamantium truncan and Mark is able to get the upper hand and incapacitate Randall. And in the scuffle, Punisher is able to shoot and kill Nephthys, although Randall flees again. Losing to Mark again forces a psychological breakdown in Randall, and he once again forms the Hatchet Man persona and starts targeting nurses. Cracks in his invulnerable skin start to form from where Moon Knight's trunken had pierced him. They track Randall to a hospital Marlene and Frenchie are in, and Randall throws Frenchie out of the window. Mark jumps out the window to save Frenchie, and without Mark to protect Randall from lethal force, the Punisher shoots him like 8 billion times in the cracks in his skin, causing the bullets to finally pierce inside of him and kill him. Obviously, this bums out Mark, who's now directly responsible for his brother's death twice. Or three times, depending on how you're counting it. And that ends the comic book appearances of Randall Spector. Except it doesn't, because he's now somehow resurrected. And I say somehow because I could not find the issue where this resurrection happens at all. He just shows up again in the miniseries Shadowland Moon Knight. All right, you're going to get a lot of information here, so just buckle up. This version of Randall was originally an unnamed man on the verge of suicide. He was a former veteran, a minor villain named The Profile, who has the ability to psychologically profile anybody, was tasked by a possessed form of Daredevil into finding and apprehending Moon Knight. The Profile found Randall and convinced him, falsely, that he was the true avatar of Khonshu. Another wacky addition here is that this version of Randall also had gained the ability to shoot laser blasts out of his eyes after being exposed to uranium bullets while in service as a mercenary overseas. And this version of Randall is a grade A scumbag. I mean, all the other versions were really terrible, but this one's even worse somehow. He ends up committing a ton of murders in the name of Khonshu, and then he even breaks into Mark's home and beats his just announced pregnant girlfriend Marlene up, causing her to miscarry a child. So Mark has two really big problems. On one hand, Daredevil, who's possessed by an entity, is trying to kill him, and on the other hand, his brother, who is a psychopath, is also trying to kill him. Mark simultaneously tracks Randall to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, while also looking for an artifact called the Crescent Sapphire that would free the possessed Daredevil from the entity controlling him. Mark ends up finding the sapphire in a fortune teller shop and buys it from her for a tremendous sum of money. However, Randall in disguise immediately steals it from him. 
In their final battle, Mark and Randall face off, both dressed similarly to Moon Knight, and after getting his ass kicked, Randall attempts to detonate a bomb that he had strapped to himself. In a last ditch move, Mark ends up having to cut Randall's throat with the Sapphire Crescent, killing him for a third time. Probably, because the body was never recovered in the book, but he's never shown up again, so he could still be out there, or he could be dead forever, we don't know. And that is it for the comic book history of Randall Spector, and I know what you're thinking, you just can't keep a good villain like this down. I mean, how many times did he die today? Like, four? Five? Who knows? Thank you guys for watching this video, this has been Nick from Key Issues, and remember the motto, Shadow Knight over everything.